Hello everyone and welcome to Panzer Strategy where I, your host, will be providing you with a, a walkthrough of the game, going through the various missions and giving you insight into you know, how to tackle different scenarios and uh, giving some uh, strategic insights, uh, things like that. But I will also go through all the basic elements of the game. If you uh, aren't familiar with this game just yet, just uh, going through the mechanics. Let's just uh, start out here and uh, yeah, let's just uh, run through the basics first uh, while we go through our first mission, which will be the Spanish Civil War. Before we do that, there are still a couple of choices that we need to make. Let's just uh, get into the excitement of uh, yeah, Panzer Strategy. There's some uh, interesting things around here, especially the cutscenes which I think are uh, above and beyond uh, anything you've ever seen but uh, you'll figure it out soon enough soon enough let's just uh, start a new game here from the initial Wehrmacht operations in Spain to the conquest of the whole European continent you shall lead the Blitzkrieg the lightning war the time has come to deal with Poland France and Britain will have to pay for the disgrace of the Treaty of Versailles the battles from Norway to North Africa and from the British Isles to the Soviet Union are awaiting you. Using the power of your aerial and naval forces, take over the Atlantic and the Mediterranean. Britain should part with the role of mistress of the sea. Having seized Europe, you will receive the key to the Drenga Korsen, crush the hordes of the hated Bolsheviks in the fire of unprecedented battles. Eich will finally establish its power over the continent by occupying the territories from the Atlantic to the Urals and from Norway to North Africa. The world is waiting for a new order led by the Groys Deutschland. Yeah, and before we start, uh, we have to choose between uh, role-playing as one of three commanders. We can choose Eric von Manstein, Erwin Rommel, and Heinz Guderen, or... <laughs> Heinz Guderian, as he's uh, also sometimes called, but not in this game, not in this game, it's uh, Heinz Guderian here. So, the uh, game will automatically go and read the text for each and every one of them, so I'll be uh, going over that quickly. Each of these commanders has a set of skills that will help you throughout the game, and uh, yeah, that's uh, a pretty interesting. First of all, Heinz, uh, I mean Eric von Manstein has the strategist ability which reduces the cost of activating the headquarters skills in the game you actually have a headquarters unit which allows you to activate skills such as for example allowing your artillery to act attack twice things like that i'll be going over that while we're actually in the map uh, but those skills they do cost points and that basically makes it cheaper if you choose him it's also cheaper for those headquarters to actually learn those skills, which also cast points. Uh, you get those points during the actual missions, but uh, this means that you'll be able to get new skills faster, and activating them is a bit cheaper. Besides that, all units in a radius of two hexes from your headquarters unit get plus one level. What that actually means, they, they don't like level up, but they actually get plus one to their attack. Uh, plus one to their defense, uh, things like that. So if they're close to your headquarters unit, they get a lot better. Either way, that's it for Eric von Manstein. I will go to Erwin Rommel, but it will immediately switch to his text. Uh, so I will uh, shut up for a bit. He's one of the best in the Wehrmacht, an audacious and risk-averse commander. He prefers to lead from the front lines, moving along with the raccoon. He's elusive and is capable of delivering immediate strikes. Due to his flair and finesse, he was nicknamed the Desert Fox. He skillfully uses tricks on the battlefield. He invented the tactic of shooting enemy tanks using anti-aircraft artillery. Enjoys the greater credibility of the Reich, and he has an unquestionable authority in his troops. Within the enemy ranks, Rommel is considered a superhuman and has attributed supernatural powers. <laughs> yes, this, uh, this superhuman has the ability to... Uh, make the 88 millimeter anti-aircraft guns into anti-tank units as well. Uh, besides that, also has a radius of two hexes, or the units within two radius of uh, 
the headquarters get plus one level to their attack, defense, and so on. But he also gives all his units plus two initiative. And uh, what that means is that his units will attack uh, a little bit uh, earlier than the enemy enemy's units. Uh, so that's pretty nice, actually. Last one will be Heinz. Schneller Heinz. Fast Heinz. The king of the tank war. He received his nickname from his ability to destroy enemy troops in incredibly fast pace. He was the creator of the Wehrmacht's tank forces and of the very theory of Blitzkrieg. Darren is a second to none in the art of motorized warfare. His tanks advance at an unthinkable pace for the enemy, blocking communications, destroying headquarters and spreading panic to the enemy's rear. Not only Schnellehines excelled in his battles, but thanks to his efforts, the cost of the tank production in Reich has increased drastically. Yes, indeed. Uh, so, if you choose him as your commander, get plus 25 experience of tank units, so they level up faster. Minus 25% cost for buying tanks and self-propelled units, uh, so they're also cheaper. And all units within a radius of 2x from the headquarters get plus 1 level. Uh, if we go back to von Manstein... Perhaps the greatest mind of the Urber Commando, German General Headquarters, is considered to be one of the most gifted generals of the Wehrmacht, the master of Blitzkrieg, and a profession master of war tactics. His technical skills and first-hand knowledge of the tactical situation is impeccable. Even the most powerful opponents panic under Meinstein's brilliant operation capabilities. He has a rare combination of intelligence as a headquarters officer and the determination of the frontline commander. Under Meinstein's leadership, the entire military machine works like a clockwork, and any armed force becomes as efficient as it can be. Exactly, and I will actually be choosing uh, Manstein here, because I do want to make use of my headquarters quills uh, quite efficiently. And um, yeah, I think that the other two, they're nice too, but I'm just going to go for this one. I set my difficulty to general which is actually the default difficulty uh yeah the game tries to trick you there because it actually starts out on colonel which is actually easy mode and general is the is the actual default mode at which you get the uh, base amount of prestige which is pretty much your money in the game Anyway, let's get started. I'm choosing Eric von Manstein. We do get these beautiful cutscenes before and after each mission, which is uh, a bit of a novelty, but you'll you'll see. They're they're more there for comical relief, I think, than anything else. Uh, let's just let's just get into it. Uh, yeah, I do want the tutorial actually to show things off. In 1933, Germany embarked on a path of grandiose changes. After the humiliations they have suffered from their defeat in the Great War, the patience of the Germans was exhausted. The German nation rallied around their new leader. Hitler made it clear to the whole world that he was determined to solve all territorial and economic problems caused by the Treaty of Versailles. Because of this treaty, Germany has lost all its colonies. Part of the original German territory and was obliged to pay huge reparations for the next 80 years. Attempts to resolve it peacefully were met with a strict refusal and military intervention from France. In order to defend its independence, Germany had to start a war. General Franco has raised an uprising against the communist regime in Spain. I believe it is necessary to help him. This operation will not only strengthen the economic power of the Reich, but will also provide an opportunity to test new types of weapons. A quick victory will certainly strengthen our position in the global political scene, but this is not our main goal. Unfortunately, the international situation does not allow us to intervene openly. Therefore, volunteering corps will deploy in Spain under your command. Take off immediately. The troops are waiting for you. Yes, my Fura. Because we're not allowed... It's necessary to gain oh. a foothold in order to be able to deploy forces. The Republicans have left a very weak garrison to guard this airfield. Let's begin by capturing it. Select an infantry unit by clicking on it with the left mouse button. Then, 
you can issue comments to the unit. Yeah, because uh, as I was uh, saying, because we're not allowed to actively engage in war, we're going to send one of our highest military leaders with an entire force of units. All right. Either way, <laughs> yeah, that was uh, one of the great cutscenes. Um, and that one actually starts out mildly. It, it will get more interesting. Either way, we're here in the uh, intro of the game where they go over some of the base mechanics. Uh, first of all, if you want to select a unit, you actually have to le left click on it. But before we begin that, uh, we have the map here. If you want to zoom in or out, you can just use the mouse wheel. You can zoom in uh, pretty far, actually. So that's, that's pretty funny. You can already see, see some of our burned out recon units. And you can zoom up to get a view from above, but I don't recommend it because you can hardly see anything. And uh, I think the view from here is actually pretty bad. So I, I prefer personally to keep it like this. It's not too bad. I, I, I can manage. Either way, if we want to select a unit, we just left click on the actual unit, not on the hex around it, that doesn't do anything. Guards. In most cases, units are able to attack one time per turn. And yeah, if we left click it, we get to select that unit. It has currently 10 strength points, as you can see. Unfortunately, we don't have detailed information on the enemy unit uh, because our recon isn't high enough. But if we hover over it, we also get a detailed battle report. But again, this we don't really see the outcome because we, we really don't know how they're holding up there. But let's just attack regardless because we have to do so. To do this, move the unit towards the hexagon with the flag. Only land units can capture objects. So if you want to move a unit somewhere else, you just select it first and then left click on the other uh, hex and it will move there if it's within its range and its range is indicated by this uh, the blue hexes here. Now if I want to move this unit by truck as indicated by these uh, truck pictures or icons here um, yeah, I can go a little bit further, but I have to use the, the trucks and obviously they're a lot weaker while they are holed up in the actual trucks. There is actually a death's head here indicating that if I were to move here with this infantry with the truck, they would actually get counterattacked by either of these two units um, because they kind of run into them. That's just how this game works. But that's not what I'm going to do. I'm just going to capture this airbase. Uh, for every building, enemy building that we capture for the first time, we uh, do get a set number of prestige. It's, it's different per building. But uh, yeah, let's just uh, take it. The airfield is ours. Perfect. The Luftwaffe will immediately transfer additional air forces to this airfield. Nice. In order to transfer non-infantry troops, it is necessary to capture the railroad station. Use the attack aircraft to blast away the enemy force from the station and then occupy it with infantry. Choose a tactical bomber. All right, I'll just left click it here. Bomb the enemy by clicking on it with the left mouse button. The aircraft can attack ground targets located in the same hexagon as them. All right, so if I want to attack this unit, all I have to do is actually hover over the unit itself and I'll get the battle information screen, then just left click. If I want to move the attack aircraft uh, on top of this hex, but not actually bomb them, I just have to hover over the sides while not actually clicking this unit and then left clicking as well. And then I won't actually attack the unit immediately. Um, if I want to be a little bit more cautious, you're going to do that first because there might be something uh, nasty out there or the odds might not be as favorable as you thought they were. For now though, I'm forced to just uh, charge in recklessly. So that's what I'm going to do. Following the attack on the ground target, the bomber can move one hexagon and give others the opportunity to attack. Move the plane aside. Yeah, I can move the, the plane one more hex after that. Choose another bomber. Attack the enemy. Take the second bomber of the site of an attack. Choose an infantry unit. In most cases, troops are only able to move once per turn. Infantry can move dismounted and by transport. Yeah, so... If you want to see whether a unit can still move, you can check uh, this uh, fuel icon here, which is still green, which means that it can still move. If it can't move anymore, it's going to be gray. With this bullet icon, it means that it can still attack. 
if uh, they can't attack anymore, that's also going to be gray. Capture the station. It is necessary for the transfer of heavy units and rail shipment of logistical supplies. Yeah, I'll be going over supply in uh, just a little bit, but for now, I'll just go and take this uh, railroad station here. Excellent. Now our heavy units could be relocated in here. Now we need artillery support. It is necessary to capture the primary supply depot to ensure the successful resupply of our troops. From there, logistical supplies can be sent to all other supply depots. Initially, shell it with artillery and then attack with the infantry. Choose an artillery unit. Targets in range of your artillery units are highlighted in red. Alright, so I'll select Shall the artillery. Enemy. Artillery is very effective against unarmored targets such as infantry. And it will be possible for me to shell it actually from two hexes away. Um, it actually has a range of four, but that doesn't really matter. Either way, let's attack this infantry by just left clicking on it. Yeah. <laughs> Finish off your weakened enemy. When not in transit mode, towed artillery can move one hexagon per turn, while in transit mode it can move much further. However, when in transit mode, towed artillery is very vulnerable and it cannot engage the enemy. This time we have to take our chances. The time is almost up. Capture the supply depot with artillery, the last unit, which can still move during this turn. Choose an artillery unit. Yeah. Capture the supply depot. Once captured, the supply depot will automatically start delivering logistical support to all your units in its operational area. To see the supply depot's operational area, click on it. Right, so what I'm going to do um, is just move in there. You can basically take ground buildings or cities with uh, practically any ground unit infantry recon artillery anti-aircraft guns tanks with just anything it doesn't matter whether they're in trucks or uh, unloaded they will always take it automatically uh, so that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna use this artillery it can still move as you can see by the uh, green uh, fuel bar there uh, can't fire anymore because of the uh, bullet you can see that as well it's gray let's move Excellent. in there the bridgehead have been seized. Press the end turn button to proceed to the next phase of the operation. Press end turn button. And we're done there. So now that we've actually uh, done this little tutorial, we get access to all the other stuff uh, in this game. First of all, the minimap, which is on the lower left. And there are a bunch of different icons. Uh, so the, the purple icons down here they are train depots uh, as you can see this uh, if we have the top lefternmost building it says railroad station that's what it is too the primary depots are orange you can see that here the building next to it is primary depot and then we have that uh, here as well it's orange the blue hexes or dots in this case are airfields um, as you can go over the map like that and uh, they are also scattered around the map like that um, and then also for these uh, green dots they're actually my units and uh, yeah so they, they're also scattered around here if your unit is on one of these hexes it will be half green half purple or whatever color of the building that is um, either way, that's the minimap. Then we have all of our units that are currently fighting um, over here in the center. We have both our standing army and the reserve. There's nothing in my reserve for now. I need to end the turn. If I want to repair units on the battlefield, this is where I'll do it by clicking uh, this here button. But I'll be going over that uh, later as well. It's not necessary now. We have detailed information on our current selected unit, this artillery, which is in a ground transport. Uh, but you can see it's selected. 14 out of 16 fuel, 6 out of 8 movement points to the left, but it can only move once, and 2 out of 3 ammo. Last button we have here is the end turn button with a couple of numbers on it. Um, each mission has a turn limit for the different gradations of uh, achieving a victory. You have a gold victory, which is the best. 
then silver and then bronze the best victory or the earliest victory gives you the most prestige or most cash at the end of the turn so you'll be able to buy more units um, if you get a, a gold victory uh, which is pretty nice and then you'll get less prestige for silver and bronze uh, so you always want to aim to get the uh, fastest uh, victory as possible um, but you know still as close to to gold so I would want to finish this mission within uh, 12 turns uh, let's end the turn here General Staff to the Commander of the Gondor Legion. We have seized the city of Talavera and are ready to launch a general offensive against Madrid. In cooperation with the troops of General Franco, your task is to ensure the success of the offensive. In order to proceed, you need to establish control over the following key strategic points. Las Ventas, to ensure further advance, take over the Republican Supply Depot. Brunette. Taking this important transport junction will allow you to possess a useful airfield close to Madrid. While in Madrid, capture the city's airport, the railroad station, and the main supply depot of the Republican Army. Faithful to Franco, the garrison of Toledo keeps control of the city with defiance. Rescue the city defenders before the Republicans destroy them. Okay, there we go. So we got our objectives. Um, now we have full control over all of our units on the battlefield, which have also deployed. Which means that I will be going over my main strategy for this mission uh, first before actually starting and continuing with uh, the rest of the, uh, the units as well. Because there's still a lot of things to cover here, even for the first mission. First of all, um, what I'm going to do in this mission the southern force is going towards the city of Toledo in order to help the besieging garrison and also uh, move up in order to capture Las Ventas and El Alamo. Um, so these forces are going to split up into two groups, one down here and one up here. The troops down here will also move up towards this city and try to take that. The forces up north, these guys and these guys, will move towards Brunette uh, up here and try to take that, possibly also El Alamo, and then from there move east towards Madrid and try to take that. Um, one of the things that is very noteworthy in this mission is that the enemy has very little anti-aircraft guns. and. They practically only have anti-aircraft guns in Madrid itself. Uh, so besides Madrid, you're pretty much free to bomb at leisure anywhere you want. Uh, which will make this mission, uh, well not easy per se, but will allow you to take very little casualties I think, especially with the large turn limit. Either way, that, that's basically going to be my overall strategy. So, top two groups, just mainly heading east. Southern group, east split up, one down, one up. And then also taking the other cities. So, let's just get started with the northern guys over here. And we can see, first of all, this here infantry. Now, icons next to a unit allow you to quickly get important information about it. If the selected unit does not move during the current turn, the canister icon will be green. If it moves, the icon will be gray. Similarly, the cartridge icon shows if the unit has made an attack during this move. The red color of icons indicates that either the fuel or ammo in that particular unit has been depleted. Yeah, indeed. So if it's green, you can still either move with the canister, you can still fire. With the cartridge icon, if they are gray, you cannot move anymore or you cannot fire anymore. If they are red, your fuel is out or your ammo is out entirely. Now, if we left click this unit and then hover over this other unit, we can uh, pretty much see the combat odds here, which is I will be dealing three damage to the Republican unit and they would be estimated to deal one damage to me, which is okay. It's not bad, but I could use the artillery first. And you can see that I'm expected to deal 8 damage and get 0 in return. I like that a lot more. So I'll left click. 
and attack them. Didn't entirely go my way, but now I'll just Your grab... Your army is comprised of the core and auxiliary forces. You can distinguish between the two by the color of the figures denoting the strength of the unit. A core unit is indicated by green color. An auxiliary unit is indicated by yellow. The auxiliary forces are given for one mission only. The core forces will accompany you through the campaign, gaining strength through battles. You will be able to improve them and equip them with additional equipment. These units are the ones that should be primarily protected. Yes, they are correct, but there is one catch. Namely, that at the end of the mission, you actually have to repair all your units to full strength uh, by default. So you can't choose to do that or not. Um, and that works for both core units and non-core units. So you can't just uh, throw away your non-core forces thinking that they are expendable since they uh, will only carry for one turn. No, no, that's not the case. You still have to repair those units back up to full strength just like you do core units. So either, even though they might be more expendable or uh, you will be less safe with non-core units, you still want to make sure to take as little damage as possible even with these guys because you have to repair them at the end of the scenario. Now repairing your units at the end of the scenario only costs 20% of the actual strength or of the actual value of the unit. Um, but still, you know, you, you want to keep your prestige in order to buy things. Uh, if you were to repair a unit while in the actual mission itself, it costs 50% of the actual cost of the unit. So say that an infantry would cost 100 um, at 10 strength, of course. And it would be damaged by one strength point so it's at nine and I want to repair it in the game it would actually cost me five would they have to repair it at the end of the mission it would only cost two so you're also encouraged to not repair your units well in the actual battle but to try and do that later if you can uh, so I actually think that's a very nice mechanic. I actually like that a lot about this game. I think that's that's a great mechanic that, that actually uh, forces you not only to think about the forces that you will take with you, uh, but also the ones that get left behind. Because, well, you know, if the forces that are left behind are but a, uh, you know, a shadow of what they once were, then, of course, the Wehrmacht is going to be in trouble. Either way, let's continue with the destruction of this unit. Let's just move this here infantry forward. Infantry solidified. Infantry units can easily hide themselves from attacks and shelling in urban, wooded, and mountainous areas. Destroying enemy armor is much easier here than in the open field. Yeah, and the game actually wanted to tell you that in this game you do have something which is a kind of like... Uh, closed terrain and open terrain so tanks are good in open terrain such as uh, clear roads uh, things like that and infantry works out much better in places like forests mountains and hills or uh, rough terrain um, cities are also closed terrain for example so uh, yeah each unit has a different uh, strengths and also different weaknesses you know some tanks are just naturally good against infantry other tanks are good against other tanks things like that either way we know there's a unit here we know which unit it is and how weak it is so let's attack it and that enemy unit actually surrendered if the enemy unit is weak or your unit is weak and it gets attacked in a state where it can't really fight back then there's a chance it will surrender giving you extra prestige points and possibly information about the enemy's location which is uh, very nice actually all right let's uh, move the rest of the infantry forward artillery is the basis of the firepower of the troops it can pave the way for maneuvering forces or weaken the enemy's attack through artillery fire support Due to the long firing range of artillery, it can inflict damage on enemy units beyond the limits of their firing range. Use artillery barrage before assaulting enemy fortified positions. Remember though, artillery is vulnerable to ground and aerial attacks, so it needs to be protected. 
Indeed. So I'll be moving that to hexes. And the artillery really is your bread and butter unit in this game. You, you really want uh, quite a bit of them simply because they are so powerful. So let's move that there. There we go. We have this infantry. We can only move it here, so let's do that. And we also have the recon unit, which is the last unit that I'll explain during this episode. So the recon unit is able to move multiple times each turn. It has seven movement, and you can keep on um, moving that amount of hexes even though you've already selected it. So what I can do, for example, is I can move first three hexes and then select another path. So I can move here and then back if I wanted to. Um, but even after moving, it's able to use up the rest of its movement points freely as it sees fit. Um, any number of times, as long as it still has movement points and fuel, of course. So that's really nice. Also, the recon unit has a special ability that uh, allows it to stop the moment that it detects new enemy units. After it stops, uh, you'll be able to reallocate its remaining movement points as you see fit, even if you had already carved out a path for it, which I will show here uh, in, a, in a moment. So first of all, let's just move three hexes Ricky forward. units are able to seek out the enemy from afar and can also locate ambush sites. You can give the reconnaissance unit the order to advance more than once per turn, as long as you still have movement points. Once the reconnaissance sees the enemy, it automatically stops, and then it can move towards any direction. Reconnaissance is extremely important in an offensive, since it provides you full awareness about the presence of the enemy unit, thus making your attack more effective. Yeah, that's exactly what I just said. Either way, I still have four movement points, so I can keep moving, and I'll be moving towards this next forest here. Well, it seems like my recon just spotted an enemy unit while moving into this hex. So what did it do? It actually stopped moving while still having two out of seven movement points. And even though I already set it on a path to move towards this forest, I can actually reallocate those points and, for example, move back if I want it in order to get back to a more strategic position. I don't actually want to do that, but that ability is there and will be very handy. Uh, so the recon is in the forest where it's tougher to detect it, and I think it will be safe. Besides that, we still have this anti-aircraft unit which is able to fire on enemy aircraft as it comes into range. Of course, it sh has to be not in a truck at that moment. Um, and I can manually select it to attack enemy aircraft as well. Let's just try to move that as much forward as possible here. And there we go, that uh, leaves the ground forces here too. I think what I'm going to do for now though, is I'm going to end the video here, uh, leaving you uh, with uh, the second remaining part where I will probably finish up this mission and go over you know, the, the remaining stuff. Um, either way, I think for now I've been uh, talking long enough already. Uh, you know, not that much action yet, but uh, I had a lot of things to explain. Um, so it's not that not all that bad i think uh either way thanks for watching do hope you enjoyed it regardless and hope to see you back for more in uh, this uh, walkthrough of this game uh, so see you next time